Hey, book lovers. Want to hear a story? Welcome back to Storytime with M. This is a mini episode from M's Books and Cats podcast, where I am sharing my book Super Jim, a chapter or sometimes two, a week. And this week is chapter seven. I would like to add a trigger warning. This book contains adult content, including language, violence, and references to eating disordered behavior. Without further ado, please enjoy chapter seven of Super Jim. This wasn't her apartment. It looked similar, but something was different. She couldn't place it. There's no kitchen. Other Maggie was right. She inspected the room again. This time she saw every detail. It was the same as her apartment except for the empty corner by the window. The gleaming white countertops were there. The metal table and chair were there. Only the stove and refrigerator were missing. This can't be good. Get out of here. Now. Maggie managed to crawl off the bed. Her legs were stiff and sore. A small, involuntary sound escaped her lips when she tried to stand. She teetered for a moment, unsure if her legs would hold her weight. They did. She hobbled to the table holding her swollen hand. There was a small metal box on the chair. It was heavy. She could barely lift it with her good hand. Something rattled inside. There was a shuffling sound outside the door, and Maggie froze. Why didn't you try the door? She looked around frantically for a place to hide, but all the apartments had the same open studio design. It was just a big, empty box. No use trying to hide. The woman that came through the door was shorter than Maggie and squat, with sturdy legs and a thick waist. The front of her uniform was stretched across her ample chest, and she wore her red hair pulled into two tight pigtails. They made her look desperately old. Her eyes were hopeless and without compassion. She looked muscular and strong, but Maggie guessed that she must have a fat rating of at least five. Well... I assume you have questions. Let's get down to it. I don't have a lot of time. She slapped the notebook down on the table and pushed past Maggie. She daintily lowered her mighty rear into the only chair and gave Maggie a challenging look. Well, questions. Only one. Where's Mr. Pratt? Pigtails couldn't hide her surprise. I know he's here. She paused and looked around. Wherever here is, bring him to me. I want to speak to him. She couldn't keep the tremor out of her voice. Pigtails heard it and grinned. I'll go get him. I'm sure he's got something special planned for you. She pressed her massive tits against the table and hefted her body out of the chair. She capped her pen and closed her notebook with exaggerated slowness. There was a small, knowing smile on her lips. Maggie wanted to slap it off her face. Pigtails gave her a wink and used her gigantic rear to push open the door. Being Benjamin Pratt's special project was exhausting. Maggie never got used to the kidnappings. They were happening more and more regularly, and every time she woke up in a terrified sweat, panic consumed her in those first few minutes. Then the realization of what had happened was worse than the panic, because she knew what came next. Maggie seated herself on the countertop. She leaned back on her elbows and waited for his arrival. The light above the door flashed purple. It was almost always purple. Occasionally, the light was blue. Blue was worse. The door swung open. Mr. Pratt was dressed in his customary all-white ensemble. It was the same bright shade as the walls, making his tan face seem to hover in the air. He smiled at her, but his dark eyes were angry. He dismissed pigtails with a quick wave of his hand. She left in a huff with one last hard look at Maggie. She slammed the door behind her and locked it. 
Mr. Pratt laughed and Maggie felt her blood turn to ice. He leaned against the counter and placed his hand on her knee. You've been causing me a lot of problems, my dear girl. You know I don't like problems. His hand moved up her thigh and his grip tightened. She bit her lip and refused to cry out. She wouldn't let him win. He laughed again and squeezed harder. Maggie tasted blood. Tessa was one of my first trainers. Did you know that? She and Thor have been with me since the beginning. She was never as good as he was, but she was so enthusiastic. And now she's dead. Because of you. He moved his hand farther up her leg and squeezed harder. Tears filled Maggie's eyes. He wrapped her hair around his other hand and pulled her closer. She cried out. I want to know how you did it. You can barely curl a ten-pound dumbbell. But somehow, you had the strength to crush her skull. How? Maggie felt sick. It had happened again. And it's going to keep happening. Mr. Pratt was waiting. His hand went higher. No. Her voice was high and reedy. She barely recognized it as her own. She was somewhere up high, floating above her own body. Tell me how you did it. I don't know. Her damn voice would not stop shaking. Bullshit. He whispered it in her ear like a lover. Then he yanked her head back and undid his pants. He shoved himself inside her. She cried, but less than the time before. This time he didn't slam her head into the wall. Just play along. Tell me. He repeated it with every thrust, but Maggie barely heard him. She was still floating above it all. She watched her hand draw back. It was going to happen again. She was going to do it this time. No. And then she was back in her body. Mr. Pratt was done. He buttoned his pants and ran a hand over his short bristles. He turned away, and she saw those gruesome extra eyes. Do you know where you are? Hell? He laughed again. Maggie wished she'd kept her mouth shut. His eyes... The real ones were wild. No point in provoking him. Not yet. Oh, this place is much worse. He laughed again and for far too long. Maggie felt a cramp in her belly. He leaned in close and stroked her hair. Don't forget about fat camp, Maggie. I know you've heard the rumors. Of course she had. Everyone knew about the death camp. Please. Mr. Pratt found the high, squeaky pitch of her voice hilarious. She'd never heard him laugh this much. Not since the final purge. Mr. Pratt wasn't known for his sense of humor, and his laughter was terrifying. Not yet, my dear. You get another chance. What a lucky, lucky girl you are. You're safe. For now. Who spoke for me? It had to be Thor. He had been waiting to torture her for years. Each failed trainer was a step closer. He wouldn't want her dead. It was finally his turn. Mr. Pratt ran a hand over his face. His cheeks were red from his mirth, but the laughter had passed. The anger had returned to the dark pits of his eyes. Tessa. You see, you didn't kill her immediately. She died slowly. It was agony for her. Very painful to watch. He wasn't looking at her. His expression was distant and sad. He shook his head slowly. The girl had a good heart. It's a stupid thing to have, but she couldn't help it. I made a promise to fulfill her dying wish. 
She had a new plan for you, Maggie. She believed she had finally discovered how to cure you. He pinched the hanging flesh under her arm and made a face. She made me promise I would allow you to live. She so wanted to help you. Stupid girl. Maggie thought she saw tears in his eyes, but she was wrong. His big hand closed around her throat. The lights danced. Everything started to go black, and Maggie fought to stay conscious. I don't know what you are, but I will figure you out, my dear. You have one month. Follow Tessa's program and lose as much as you can. If it's not enough, fat camp is your future. He dropped her on the floor and kicked her in the ribs. She gasped and choked, but managed to roll away from the second kick. Her throat burned and her eyes hurt. Mr. Pratt stepped over her as he walked out the door. He didn't give her a second look. Maggie heard voices in the hall. Pigtails entered a moment later. Her face was grim. Are you ready to be serious now? Maggie nodded and gingerly touched her throat. Good. Do you have any questions? Yes. It hurt to talk. Pigtails sighed and rolled her eyes. This is going to take too long. Here. She held out her hand to Maggie. On her rough, calloused palm was a small green pill. What is... It will take the pain away. For now. They last about 20 minutes. Just what we need. Take it. Take the pill. What could be worse than this? She took the pill. It stuck in her throat. Tears rolled down her cheeks as a fresh wave of pain exploded behind her eyes. It took several attempts to get it down. Each one was more painful than the last. Pigtails waited patiently. This was obviously not the first time she'd done this. Maggie's throat felt better almost immediately. Her head was foggy. She couldn't hold on to a thought for long. The whole room seemed to be spinning, but she didn't hurt anymore. Well, questions. The room swooped and dipped. Pigtails was a blur. Where am I? Her throat felt thick. It was a struggle to form the words. The clinic. No. The clinic was a block of buildings on the outskirts of Famicili. A high steel wall surrounded them, and only the tallest buildings were visible. The windows that could be seen were covered with iron bars. No one really knew what went on there. There was an armed goon patrolling the only entrance at all times. Very few people had the clearance to enter. Even the trainers were left outside when they brought their problem clients. Clients went in, and they came out altered. Quiet. They couldn't remember what had happened in the clinic. At least, that's what they claimed. Their eyes said different. There were rumors. Experiments with new weight loss drugs. Problem clients made perfect test subjects. Maggie regretted the willingness with which she had swallowed the green pill. Anything else? Pigtails was drumming her stubby fingers on the table. Where is my calorie tracker? You don't need one here. Your diet is carefully monitored and prepared for you. You won't have to worry about your junkie addiction. No way to get them in here. You know? Of course. You think you're smart? Mr. Pratt has seen it all. Many that were far more cunning than you. I can't believe he's wasting his time on a junkies addict. Addicts that enter the clinic don't usually get to leave. What makes you so special? I thought I was supposed to ask the questions. Pigtails glared at her. Her face was bright red. Her hands curled around the edge of the table, and she spoke through gritted teeth. Anything else? How could you let him do it? Pigtails was unmoved. It wasn't the first time, was it? You should feel lucky he chose you. Some of us would jump at the chance. Some of us can appreciate his genius. His madness, not genius. He's a madman. It happened fast. The table flipped and Pigtails was on top of her. 
She hit Maggie in the face. Her thick fists made contact over and over. Maggie tried to hold on to consciousness. She was on the verge of passing out, but the attack continued. She couldn't stand it anymore. It hurt too much. She tasted blood and her eyes were swollen to painful slits. A skinny man in a white lab coat appeared. He was surprisingly strong and pulled pigtails off Maggie with little effort. Pigtails was exhausted and went willingly. She hadn't known how to stop once she got started. Luckily for her, Maggie had more control. She wasn't worth it. The skinny man extended his hand to her. His fingers were long and thin. His pale skin glowed under the bright fluorescent lights. She took his hand hesitantly, and he helped her to her feet. He shook her hand awkwardly. His fingers were damp and limp. He pushed his glasses up on his nose and smiled shyly. It gave his face a boyish look. Hello, Maggie. I'm Dr. Clyde. I'll be monitoring your weight loss effort from now on. He grinned wider and held up a small tablet. The screen glowed purple and green. It was labeled Plan 210MJQ. I worked closely with Tessa to create your new plan. It's very precise. Some of my finest work. Tessa really believed this one was it. She was convinced you would surprise everyone. Maggie fell ill. It had happened again. Why Tessa? Why not Mr. Pratt? Not yet. Save the big boss for last. Dr. Clyde tapped on the tablet and peered at his notes. From his pocket, he produced a blue plastic tube. Dinner time. This is dinner. The pill inside the tube was turquoise and the size and shape of a large marble. Her throat was still throbbing. Fighting with pigtails had made things worse. Everything hurt. Even the tips of her fingers ached. Down the hatch. I am sorry, but you have to do it in front of me. He smiled apologetically and shrugged. He really did seem sorry. Maggie trusted him the least of all. It's only for a month. If you react the way Tessa expected, you'll soon be placed on phase two. Real food. There you go. Choke it down. I am sorry I can't give you any water. They can be a little hard to swallow. It hurt all the way down to her belly. It expanded and warmed her insides. And she felt immediately full and sleepy. You should get into bed now. The pills kick in rather quickly. Her eyelids were already drooping. He put his arm around her and helped her to the bed. She was asleep before her head hit the pillow. Dr. Clyde ran his hand down her body. The smile he now wore changed him. The youthful sweetness was gone. This smile was void of feeling and hardened his features into a cold, calculated mask. He made another note on his tablet and a yellow light appeared above the door. He pushed his glasses up on his nose and smiled. He whistled as he straightened the table and chair. He took a rag from his pocket and cleaned up the blood. When the room was spotless, he typed something on his tablet, and the lights went out. Only the yellow light blazed above the doorway. He finished his song with a flourish and left the apartment, and the door softly clicked shut behind him. And that is the end of Chapter 7, Book Lovers. I hope you're still enjoying Super Gym. I will be back next week with another chapter. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, keep reading.